My name is uh, Rolf Brunstad and I'm a professor uh, at the Economics Department of Norwegian School of Economics. And today I'll talk about uh, how we can use economic welfare theory to solve common everyday problems. Contested roads are a universal phenomenon around city centers all over the world. Even in uh, medium-sized cities like Bergen, this is a problem. 30 years ago, uh, local politicians in Bergen discussed ways to finance an improvement of the road system and proposed establishing a toll ring around the city to collect a flat rate road toll for entering the city centre. A young assistant professor at the University of Bergen proposed an alternative way of road pricing, which the local press immediately baptised the breakfast ring. According to him, the road toll should be imposed as a congestion tax only during the rush hours. And as it's mainly the same cars returning in the opposite direction in the afternoon rush, it would be enough to impose a toll during the morning rush, hence the label breakfast ring. This would considerably reduce the collection costs which 30 years ago were formidable. But in addition to lowering the collection costs, this would have the beneficial side effect of being more of a deterrent to using the car during the hours when the capacity of the existing road system was overstretched. And as a car crawling alone in a slow moving queue is polluting many times more than a car running at normal speed, reducing queues would also have a beneficial effect on pollution. Unfortunately, the advice was not taken and the flat rate tax was uh, collected around the clock. Nearly 30 years later, as Bergen in spite of massive road construction was still experiencing heavy congestion during rush hours, the argument was repeated, among others, by a present professor at the Norwegian School of Economics. Let's take the example of a car trip from a suburb to the city centre. Assume driving cost, petrol, depreciation cost, etc. are 3 Norwegian crowns per kilometre. In addition, assume for simplicity that the normal pollution costs are internalised through correctly set CO2 and other pet petrol taxes. The driver attaches a value of 2 Norwegian crowns per minute of his own time. Without queues, the uh, trip takes 15 minutes, bringing the total cost of the trip to 75 Norwegian crowns. However, the road system has a capacity limit, say 30,000 cars uh, per period, or X0, beyond which queues start to form slowing down the traffic. Then the time costs of a trip start and pro to increase and probably also petrol consumption per kilometre, illustrated by the increasing part of the curve. The driver of each new car entering into the road will have to bear his own private cost for doing so. But after the capacity limit of the road system has been reached, it will also marginally slow down all other cars in the system. Therefore, the social marginal cost for adding one more car in the road system will be equal to private cost plus the extra time and driving costs uh, that the marginal entrant imposes on the other cars in the road system. Outside rush hours, the demand for car trips to the city centre stays below the capacity of the road system, as indicated by the blue demand curve. However, during rush hours, the demand curve shifts out. As drivers only consider their private costs, 
A new equilibrium is reached where the blue demand curve crosses the red private cost curve. Let's say that uh, duration increases to 40 minutes, bringing the uh, private costs to 125 Norwegian crowns, and the number of cars in the road system increases to XR. But this is not optimal, as uh, social marginal, marginal costs exceed the marginal willingness to pay. The, uh, Number of vehicles in the road system should be reduced to X opt. The social net loss during rush hours is equal to the light blue shaded area. We can internalize the extra costs imposed on the drivers by collecting a congestion toll of uh, A, Norwegian crowns, lifting up the private cost curve. Let's have a look at the winners and losers. Local government will clearly gain from this, provided they get the proceeds from the toll. This is equal to the two shaded areas. Drivers will pay through a loss in consumer surplus. Let's first have a look at the rejected cars. They will lose consumer surplus equal to the light blue shaded area. The remaining cars will, uh, of course, have to pay the congestion toll, but they will be uh, partly compensated by the value of the saved time and driving costs because of less traffic during rush hours. The results here will depend on the elasticity of demand or willingness to pay. We have two different demand curves here. The uh, steep one has a low elasticity of demand. The flat one has a high elasticity of demand. And we see that the more elastic demand, the greater welfare gain is uh, coming from imposing a congestion toll. You see that the shaded area uh, is greater. But we also see that the more elastic demand, then uh, the lower the proceeds from the toll, and also the lower the net loss for the drivers. If the uh, demand is inelastic, then the uh, Welfare gain will be smaller, but on the other hand, the proceeds from toll will be a lot greater. So, as a group, the drivers are net losers. But they could be compensated through tax cut or through the benefits from increasing spending financed by the proceeds from the congestion toll. For instance, we could imagine that the local government used the proceeds to uh, subsidize collective traffic. There is also another side to this, and that is extreme pollution. Recently, television news reported that air pollution in the Chinese capital Beijing reached levels judged as hazardous to human health. One of the main sources of this pollution is car fuels and other pollution connected to car traffic. Now this is uh, not only the fact in Beijing. Actually, this has been a recurrent problem during cold winter days in Bergen as these newspaper clippings show. Car traffic is an important source of this local pollution and emissions get worse the slower the traffic moves. We can illustrate the problem as an upward shift of the social marginal cost curve. As slow traffic is polluting more than traffic running at normal speed, 
the shift is getting progressively bigger after we have passed the capacity limit for unhampered traffic. Well, how to deal with this poisonous smog? We could do nothing. That, in fact, is the today's solution in Bergen. We could introduce a congestion toll, which has been proposed by the city council. We can add an extra road toll in periods of extreme pollution. And, which has also been proposed by the city council, we could limit traffic by number plate rationing on extreme days. If the last digit of your number is an even number, you can drive only on even dates. And vice versa for odd last digit numbers. Let's look at this uh, problem during rush hours. The extreme pollution problems lead to an increase in the so social loss if we do nothing, as the diagram now clearly indicates. However, we also see that if a uh, congestion toll is in place, then the social loss is considerably less. However, to fully internalize the full marginal social cost during these extreme days, an additional pollution toll must be added. If that's done, we have the optimal solution. Optimal solutions may be politically difficult to implement, and non-optimal ones are implemented instead. One such non-optimal solution is number plate rationing. Let's compare that to uh, the optimal solution. The uh, two shaded areas, the blue and yellow, are the uh, consumer surplus with the pollution toll. If we implement number plate rationing, then only half of the cars will be allowed to drive, so the demand curve shifts inward, being more steep. Now the consumer surplus now will be uh, the two blue shaded areas. Then, uh, of course, the, uh, we have the proceeds from uh, the pollution toll, if we choose the uh, optimal solution, which will be the uh, light blue and the uh, brownish areas. And uh, if we compare the two ways of limiting the traffic, we see that the welfare loss compared to the optimal solution with number plate rationing is equal to the yellow and the light brownish areas. So, to sum up, let's compare all options. If we uh, look at the uh, diagram, we see that in all probability the worst thing we can do is to do nothing. If we have a congestion toll in place, then uh, the uh, loss, social loss, on extreme days will be a lot smaller. Probably this solution is better than trying to do something like uh, number plate rationing. So the best we can do is to have a congestion toll on normal days and an extra pollution toll on critical days. If uh, this is politically impossible, then uh, just have a congestion toll on normal days and doing nothing extra on the extreme days is probably still better than trying to limit traffic by number plate rationing.